Hello and welcome to the Flix Forum podcast where each episode we go back and we look at a Netflix original film in the order of release. Today we have Netflix 177th film from 2019, the psychological thriller Fractured, directed by Brad Anderson, stars Sam Worthington, Lily Rabe, Stephen Tobolsky, Joa Ando and Lucy Capri. I'm Jesse and I am with MJ. How are you, mate? Good. I didn't ask you how you were first, so... <laughs> <laughs> you did. I, you must have thrown me a little bit. I'm also well if, you, if you're interested. <laughs> good, good. I'm glad. Um, I uh, Very close. Uh, I, with, I follow and you follow Australian basketball. And whenever I see the name Worthington, it's very hard. I always think of Mark Worthington. <laughs> who's, who's, and I, I almost said Mark Worthington, but this is Sam Worthington. So, um, yes. That's Sam the, Worthington has been prevalent in our lives for quite a long time as well especially being in australia he was in aussie films prior to being in like avatar so he, he should feel hard done by uh, i love both worthington so it's all good <laughs> we are here to talk about a film though so uh, we start off with our fast flick so it's a quick little summary all about fractured what's your take on fractured yeah um after an accident whilst on the road a man falls asleep in a hospital room only to discover that his wife and daughter have gone missing and no one seems to be talking about it. Oh, I really like that. That's, that's enticing, (laughs) enticing. I I, I mind knowing it was good. I've just said an accident (laughs) leading to a man losing track of his family in a hospital, but not all may be as it seems. Uh, They're pretty, it's, it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty good elevator pitch. Like the appeal to watching this film is, is based on that, that idea that, Something's up and yeah. and you want to figure out what that is. Exactly. And um, I think we'll probably get into it a bit later on, but I'm going to put it out here now that this film probably deserves to be spoiler free. So if you haven't seen it and are keen on a psychological thriller where you need to sort of piece things together, give us a pause and come back and listen later because we're going to uh, ruin this one quite early, I think. It's, it's almost impossible to have a meaningful conversation about this movie without spoiling the absolute hell out of it. Yes, definitely. I, I, yeah, especially once we get to characters and things like that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be ruined for you straight away. So we'll lead into anything that we could find out about this film coming together. And I've, I haven't got much, so I'm hoping you, you've got something to fill me in on. Yeah, I don't have a heap either. Before we do that, I don't know when we normally talk about this, but I actually had a percentage match for this one. Did you have oh, a ooh, match? I didn't, no. I had, I had a 71%, which I get a quite a lot of high matches. I get a lot of like 90s and things like that. Um, so 71 wouldn't really draw me in generally. Um, mm. I find it I find it very interesting to see, obviously there's a lot of times there's just no match. I, I'd love to know the algorithm. Like why 71? Like why not mm. 72? Why not 73? I, 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 it just fascinates me. But I reckon Al, because I know you can rate yes or no whether you like the film. I wonder if our um, ratings are skewed based also on just the fact that we watch all these Netflix original films. So there's not a real delineation of like what genre we might be into. And it gets a little bit confused because it's like, no, this guy will just watch anything. So anyway, just (laughs) thought I'd bring that up. It's a a good point Um, because, yeah, like what do they use? Do they just use their thumbs up, thumbs down, or do they actually use like how many minutes of something you've watched? I'm sure they use all of it. Um, It would have to be, yeah, because, I mean, a lot of people wouldn't rate titles, right? You just don't think to do it. The only reason I do it is to feed that algorithm, which again I don't really use to dictate what I watch. But it's, uh, it's interesting to interesting to see. Good. All right. Well, fill us in. What 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 do we know about this movie? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna be disappointing here as well. But uh, it seems like it was just a pretty straightforward screenplay was written, movie was made, producers were on board, Netflix were on board to distribute. So. November 2018 was when we first caught wind of this movie in any capacity. And, and that's when Sam Worthington signed on to be the lead. Um, Brad Anderson was attached to direct it. Um, the script was written by Alan B. McElroy. And then we had Paul Schiff, Neil Edelstein and Mike McCary and their relevant production companies producing. And they'd already got Netflix on board to distribute. So when that was all announced, everything was in a nice tidy little package. And then they filmed the movie. Um, It was shot in location in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Um, Obviously, not a heap of not a heap of locations for this film. Um, And it was it was filmed from November 2018 to January 2019, which is a surprisingly long shoot considering what this film is. Um, It had its world premiere at Fantastic Fest on September 
2022 in 2019. And then it was released on Netflix on the 11th of October. So that's about three weeks after. Um, and it was uh, ready to go from then. So apparently uh, at the time in 2019, I don't remember this, but Netflix had released four films for their 2019 Halloween schedule. This was one of them. Um, I guess it, it doesn't feel like a Halloween kind of movie, but there's some, uh, there's some stuff going on that doesn't feel right that you kind of want to get to the bottom, which I guess is a bit of a Halloween kind of trope. Uh, the other movies were In the Tall Grass, which we've covered, which based on the, the Stephen King short story. Uh, and the other two were Rattlesnake and Eli, which I think we might be getting too shortly. <laughs> I think so too. I think um, they'll be coming up in a couple of weeks. But this was, yeah, this was released the same day as the one we did a couple of weeks ago, El Camino as well. I think I had a big day. It was, day. was it? Yeah. So um, a big day of releases uh, from Netflix around this time. Um, I, I don't have an awful lot else. The, you mentioned that it was filmed in Canada, in Manitoba or whatever. And they, they have their own awards. So it was nominated oh, for three on. awards at their awards uh, for Outstanding Performance by a Female Artist and Outstanding Stunt Performances. So um, I'm not sure what stunts were involved in this, but um, <laughs> there's not an awful lot. Um, but I'm just trying to think yeah. who the female artist would have been as well. Like. Yeah, I didn't go into. I didn't. I was like, oh, whatever. It's a nothing award show anyway, so <laughs> I didn't even go into look what it was, what it was for. Maybe for the the wife, Joe. Um, Lauren Lauren Cochran. Just having a look now, and Lauren Cochran played officer, the the police officer, Officer oh. Childers. I wonder if potentially maybe she's Canadian and they mm, possibly to jump on that. And she hasn't got very much in her bio on IMDb, unfortunately. So we'll never know. Never know. Uh, never know. She was born in Calgary, Canada. There you go. There you so go. maybe they wanted to get a local girl on board. Re- so Recognising her. Right. That. <laughs> Good. Yeah. And um, fair enough. She, she was fine. Yeah, she was fine. Uh, translations around the world. So in oh, yes. Hungary, it's called Cracked. Uh, another, okay. uh, another take on the, the word fracture i guess um in poland i don't mind this title it's called trauma so that's um gives away a little bit about this film and uh romania it was called breaking reality so that's uh also mm. another bit of a spoiler and in uzbek it was called mental tremor <laughs> not mm. bad and Great. finally in vietnam it was called breakages so a couple of different titles or plays on the word uh of fractured one Tag of the few times that I'm going to say that this is the best title that we had. Fractured was the, out of all those ones. And I, I know that there's differences in the translations, but yep. um, this is a great title. Really good title. It is. It does. It means more, means more than one thing. So that's mm. lots, of, lots of good little interpretations there. Um, the tagline. Did you see the tagline for this one? No, I, may, I, I will avoid the tagline at all costs because I want to hear it live coming from your <laughs> mouth on this podcast. Good. I'm very, very keen to hear your thoughts for this one because this one is... Finding his family means facing the truth. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't mind it's, that uh, as well. It's, it's almost it's, giving away a bit too much. Too much. I think so too. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty much tells you the story. <laughs> yeah, but then I guess if you're advertising this film in any capacity, you, you're going to be shown the idea of him figuring out what's going on and, and whether that's what's going on in the hospital or what's going on in his own head. That's It's still a bit of a grey area. True. All right, well, what were the audiences and critics saying about this one? What's some consensus that we've seen? Yeah, I mean, IMDb, it's it's sitting at 6.4 out of 10 on 69,000 ratings. This is a great result for IMDb mm. there, or for, for the movie, but nice, over six, over 6 out of 10, we always say, is a pretty good result, but nearly 70,000 ratings. People are watching this movie. Sam Worthington, obviously, is still somewhat of a draw card. Um, you know, this is a time when... Netflix original films were sort of starting to get to the point where we're getting big stars in Netflix films more regularly, but this is probably one of those ones. Oh, there's a new Sam Worthington movie on, uh, on Netflix. I'm going to go check it out. Mm. It's a little bit less on Letterboxd, but 2.9 out of 5, still 41,000 ratings. So still pretty decent numbers. I, I think Netflix is going to give themselves a pat on the back for this. We obviously don't know how much they paid for it or how much they paid to acquire in any capacity because I don't divulge that information, but I think it's a, it's a win. Good, yeah. Rotten Tomatoes sits on the same, 59% on 29, so it's under that 60, which means it's rotten. So just just on that line. Mm. And um, the audience had it lower at 50% on over 500, so um, not as positive there either. 
Mm. Here's another issue I have with Rotten Tomatoes. And I, I, I talk about how much I dislike Rotten Tomatoes, but 59% is rotten. 60% is fresh or is it yeah. just like... Yeah. So if one more person reviews it and likes it, this movie goes from a rotten movie to a fresh movie. It's just, the whole thing's stupid. That's good. <laughs> I, I hate that it's just the universal, you know, definition of, of how much, how popular a movie is when there's a, such a tiny amount of people who actually rate it. And you're looking at bloody 70,000 people on IMDb watched it. So. Yeah. Good rant. I like it. Um, <laughs> Every like 10 episodes, I do one. <laughs> <laughs> well, give me your early thoughts. Would you add that? Make this fresh. Let's see. Uh, I, I probably would. Yeah. If I, if I had to decide whether it was, yeah, I thought, look, this is a movie where I, I, obviously you have a grasp on what's happening the whole time, um, but they do do a good job of keeping you guessing. Because realistically, there's only two avenues this film is going to go down. Um, it's either this guy's having a bit of a mental breakdown or we've got this like haunted, not haunted, like messed up hospital where they're doing really bad things. There's, there's two options, the whole movie. And they're not really trying to hide the fact that there's two options. They're not, this is not a movie where it's like, by the way, this was all just because he's got some head trauma. Like they, they know that you know that's an option, but they do keep you guessing basically t- till the end about which, which way it's going to be. So, um, so the ending is clean enough. It feels a little bit less trashy because they don't go down like, ah, oh, guess what? It really was a messed up hospital. But I'm not going to pretend that by the end of it, I wasn't rooting for him to kill all those doctors in that room and to get out of that hospital. So, I mean, it, it worked. It worked. It was, it's only so far you can go with a notion like this where you can take as many liberties as you want because you're dealing with um, impacts of the mind. But um, I thought it was pretty good. Good. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it too. I think that it's hard enough, um, of, you know, not it's hard enough, but I guess it had enough to keep me engaged, trying to decipher everything as it was going. And and it rides on Worthington's performance where it gives good enough range here. And, and this sort of ties in what you're saying. To be able to get the audience on board and want him to succeed, is pretty. it's a pretty impressive thing to do when... You, you get the final conclusion, I guess. So, um, and, and having those those different sort of uh, paths of, of where this film could go. So, yeah, I think it, it did a good enough job of, of putting enough things into to make you think the whole way of which way is this going to go. Yep. Yeah. Good. Mm. Characters. This is where we, we chat about. Really, this there's this is one character story, um, and there's not much else from anyone else. So, fill us in on Ray. We have to like we can't talk about the other characters. If you talk about like his wife and daughter specifically. We don't actually know them because we see his, the, the, the version of them that he's created in his own mind. Correct. Um, and similarly with the people, a lot of the people involved in the hospital, you see like a toing and froing of it. This is this is all about Ray. And it's, it's, it's such a meaty role for Sam Worthington in that sense. But, but one thing I find interesting is that they do make sure to give you a lot of baggage with this guy, obviously being a recovering alcoholic. And recovering is still a bit of a grey area because I, I'm still not 100% sure that he actually didn't buy those little mini mini bottles of booze at the, the gas station. So whether he's actually uh, often on the wagon, I'm not too sure. He's pretty responsible for the death of his first wife. Like Played a really big part in that car accident that, that killed her, and that's got to absolutely mess with your mind. Um, he's, they note that he's having issues with his current wife. He's more or less you know, due to this detachment, which you could argue is probably due to this past trauma that he's dealing with. So mentally in this film, he is starting from such a long way back um and i think that's really important part of this film is to say that this is not the kind of thing that's just going to happen to everyone there's a lot of there's a lot of issues that can go on your mind if it goes too far then you're gonna you're gonna snap at some point so basically the majority of the film that we watch he's, he's created all of this in his mind and and there are cues from his real reality that tr- trigger and, and you know find their way into this new reality that he's created but it's all this big facade that's occurred because his mind is just more or less protected him from the devastating truth of the accident. And, and to me, it absolutely is an accident. What happened? I, I don't think there's, I don't think there's any part of his character that is so detached that he didn't realize what he'd done. Like, I think he knew immediately what happened when his daughter fell and hit the ground and his brain just shut off. Um, he's dealt with something like this before and, and his brain doesn't want to see him deal with it again effectively. And that's a really interesting notion to look into. And, and 
I think at the end of the day, this guy just wants to be a really good dad and a really good husband, and he created a reality that allowed him to do it. I've got nothing. Like <laughs> literally, I've got nothing else to say. Really, um, <laughs> very very hard to follow on from that because I, I just guess I'll re-emphasize the the things that you've said where. After, like after that first 10 minutes this, this is his point of view the whole time so or his interpretation of, of what's going on or his perception so it, it's very hard to to talk about anyone else and i think that as you've mentioned like this down and out guy with so much trauma alcohol deaths accidents that and i mentioned this at the start too they, they do a good job of making you want to root for him because he wants to do something right for a change and we we hear this through his um perception of of what joe's saying to him and you know he wants to save his family and he wants to do the right thing for a change and you know that we see that i want you to get angry at the desk i want you to to find us and in his mind he's doing Mm. what he hasn't done in the past even though it's it's a little bit too late i guess because this is all uh, an illusion i guess but in his mind this is him actually for the first time in his life fighting for what he wants and that's for for his family um so it's a sort of sad situation uh, it's a tragic, tragic movie in, in so many senses. Good. Um, I guess we move on from characters um, and, and talk about the director, Brad Anderson. Um, interesting little catalog here. Any, anything, any pickups from you? Yeah, look, Brad Anderson's not a name that I know. Um, but then looking at his work, he's obviously done quite a lot. I think he, he's done a bunch of feature films, of which the only one that I've actually seen is, is The Call from 2013 with, with Halle Berry which was, was actually a pretty good movie, not dissimilar to The Guilty with Jake Gyllenhaal where Halle Berry is basically a, you know, answering a call on a phone. I can't remember if it's paramedic or it's police or whatever, but she's on the phone for most of the story. Um, he's done things like Beirut in 2018 as well, which was a decently sized film, um, but lots of TV directing as well, um, notably the odd episode of things like The Wire, Boardwalk Empire, Person of Interest, Man in the High Castle, The Sinner, and that's just to name a few. Um, yeah, this guy's uh, going out and getting it done. Yeah, the the call I just double checked because I was like, I'm pretty sure that was a WWE film, um, and it was like the, the WWE Studios uh, film with Halle. Oh, really? So, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting little fact that I don't know why I was sitting movie? in the back of my head somewhere. Um, yeah, the, <laughs> the 48 directing credits all together with the idea, like the Machinist with Christian Bale was the one that stands out to me the most. It's that movie where Christian Bale was like anorexic, pretty much. Um, and sort of shows um, the the acting chops that he has and, and what he can do for a role. But yeah, Boardwalk Empire, The Wire, Fringe, J.J. Abrams uh, produced show that I used to watch a while ago, The Shield, like lots of good credits there. Yeah. He did an episode of Alcatraz, which is to, to date my most disappointed acting <laughs> TV show after one season. I just, I got so many questions. <laughs> that, was a, that was another J.J. Abrams uh, producer. It was. Too. <laughs> it was. Come on, J.J. You know, you, uh, anyway, all right. Let's talk about some scenes. What are some things that you liked in this? Yeah, like there's 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 a little bit. I guess this is almost one of those films that you're just kind of sitting in and trying to take things out of, as opposed to reveling in it at times. But um, I think the first time my interest was properly peaked was the scene where um, the admin staff at the hospital was asking all these questions, and and then we saw a, a glimpse of the lady from the gas station, uh, and it just to me, made it feel like there was something darker and, and creepier going on. Obviously, the idea that it could have... The idea that things were going on in his head were in the back of my mind from the very, very start. Like, it was very obvious that there might have been, like, a click in his brain that something had changed. But, you know, the other idea that this was going to be some creepy hospital that's picked up some out-of-towners and can do some dodgy things it is is still an appealing movie th- movie idea for me as well. So... That, that was the first thing that got me pretty interested in what's actually going on here. And, you know, I'm all right if it goes a bit darker. Um, and, and otherwise, I guess I could say I, I did like all the cues that get you thinking or mess with your head a little bit. Like I said, the lady from the gas station rocking up the balloon, which sort of kept popping up to make you think. And it's these aren't, these aren't subtle. And I don't think they're trying to be subtle because this movie isn't trying to bamboozle you. This isn't trying to be like, for example, Shutter Island. Gosh, I probably shouldn't spoil other movies in this podcast but there's <laughs> ideas that they don't want to reveal something until the end um you know they're trying to not make you think about it this movie you know that there's two options the whole way through so i like those cues the fact that the orderly that took his wife um downstairs you find out that he's a doctor and things like that like it's all linking um and i think in general i, I didn't i didn't mind the final sequence um 
when we're still in his uh, distorted reality and he's basically blowing stuff up and shooting people and, and taking his his wife and daughter who are sort of on their last legs out of the hospital. Man, as I said, I was rooting for him. I'm like, there was, I'm pretty sure at one stage when he held the gun up and they were about to you know, attack him, I just like yelled out, just shoot him. So <laughs> I wanted this man to get out with his wife and daughter. Um, so I was in on that. And then they reveal it in, in the sense as well. I think this movie becomes a little bit trashier if, if that reveal isn't there, that, you know, he's, um, he's made it all up. He's taken a, you know, a corpse out of out of the room and sitting in the back seat. I thought it was clean. I think I think that's probably the whole thing. It, the whole thing yeah. was quite clean and, and made sense. Good, good. Um, yeah, I I got a couple of different other scenes, I guess. So I did thought the with Perry, the daughter, wandering off of that gas station and the tension of that dog barking, the slow move towards the edge and the throwing of the rock and the falling and Ray jumping that quick. Um, cut to black. I thought it was a good setup, and like it was sort of like, okay, where are we going from here? So I thought that was really well done. Um, and there's a scene when they're in that hospital waiting room, and you've got Ray and Joe sitting there, and there's just that purposeful gap between the two. And for me, that was a great little highlight, like between the distance between them, and and because the focus so far had been on the breakdown of their relationship, and 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 the argument in the car, and the argument over getting to the hospital, and and you know fighting for your family doing something right so i just thought that was really impactful that that set up in that waiting room um just it was, it was so purposely done um and interestingly that this is happening in his head too so this too, isn't yeah. actually what's happening this is happening. how he perceives it yeah um and that then that obviously leading to that that fight for what he wants to do um the sedation scene where um you know they, they lock ray in that room I just thought it was really well put together, creating that confusion with the the shaky camera and the point of view shots, and you know the <laughs> stabbing of those epipens into the into himself or adrenaline or whatever it was like, um, and the inability for him to think straight. It just I, I thought that little segment was really good. Um, and uh, the final thing, the, the fight scene in the the elevator between the security guard and Ray, <laughs> I just thought that was really well put together. Like they the change, like it wasn't just one camera shot. Like they changed the angles from above and low. Like it would have taken a while to set that up and 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 do that so i like that too <laughs> interestingly like that was another cue that like maybe he's onto something because the security guard's like i'm gonna all right take I'll take it. Yeah. i was like oh my god <laughs> it's actually um actually i've sort of just thought of a question and while we're on topic obviously he's created this illusion um and he sees his daughter going off to get her cat scan and he notes that they get in the elevator and see the ll so it's going to the lower level how I, I guess he's just he's just created this idea that he has to get to the lower level because uh, maybe he knows where that's where the body is. I don't know, but that's not like a cue that would have happened in reality for him to bring into his distorted reality that that, that lower level. And I don't know why. Um, that's the only thing that maybe doesn't feel as clean for me. There's a couple of things that I'll ask later that aren't very okay. Clean. Good, yeah, because because really he wouldn't have seen he couldn't have seen the lift because they weren't put in a lift. So yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a good, it's, I guess that all ties into it, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. Anything that you want to forget from this one? Well, I mean, I've only got one thing and it, it saddens me that it was actually, this is very rare that you have liked a scene that I didn't mm-hmm. like because, you know, I, I, I guess I don't really dislike many scenes, but this one, um, one thing I did like about the story is the cops. I thought the cops were great in the sense that they reacted exactly how you want them to react. It wasn't just like they were in on this thing. Like yeah. all of a sudden he had these, he had this help and it kind of annoyed me that they left him in a room, locked him in this room with all these drugs, including like these adrenaline injections. So I'm just talking about from a cleanness of the story, what you would do and what you wouldn't do. There was so much things that was like, oh, that's exactly what would have happened in this situation. That wasn't like a movie thing, but they wouldn't have done that. <laughs> they probably wouldn't have put him in this room with all this stuff. I didn't mind the fact that he had those adrenaline injections and that kind of hyped him up for the next hour or so um, and made his all his decisions and, and movements quite jerky. Um, but it just didn't, it didn't add up to me that that was something that pe- the, all these people that were doing the proper right thing would have done. Yes, but the, the, that wasn't the cops that put him in there though. No, I know, no, I'm not yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm, yeah. All I'm saying is the cops that they, they fit into the story as to how so, things yeah. would have acted. Okay, and the doctors yeah. were doing all the right things to how you would act as well. But to put yeah. it in security, how to put him in there was like, yeah. why would you put him in there? Yeah. 
that's a fair point as well. Um, yeah, I, the only thing like, and you mentioned this um, sort of, I guess, a little bit, the the final reveal, like while I appreciate the reveal, the patient in the backseat, the, the final, like actually telling me that he has killed his family, I, I felt sick. I, I did feel sick mm-hmm. that, and I don't know whether that was because I wanted him to be, a, you know, at the end of a feeling film, you want the character that you follow and you, you're going for to, to have done the right thing. And I know that he didn't purposefully kill them, but it just made me feel, I, I honestly felt unwell. Um, yeah. Which I, doesn't really happen from a film. So I, th- I know, I understand. I think the reveal, it's good that they've done that, but it just gave me a, a feeling that I didn't like. It's a great point. It is like, it's truly devastating. It like, it would have been so much softer, but so much nicer if it's like, hey, we went we went to the hotel. Where have you been? Why'd you leave the hotel? Mm. Like that <laughs> that could have happened, but I think it feels more poignant the fact that he he has this massive trauma off the back of another trauma. Mm. That that's the reason why his mind had to shield him from it. Yeah. Um, like I'm not blaming him for one second for the death of his daughter. That was entirely, you know, he did everything he could to avoid that. His wife, as I said, just a massive accident. Like he shoved her and, you know, they showed those spikes. I'm like, something's going to happen <laughs> with these spikes. Um, yeah. yeah, I agree. It leaves a bad taste in your mouth, but it also feels more poignant, as I said. Exactly. And you've almost led there perfectly into the idea and themes of trauma. So did you want to add anything else in uh, to go with that? Yeah, I mean, that's a huge part of this film is the idea of dealing with trauma. And as I said, they, they give him a horrid backstory to know that he's already dealing with these um, these terrifying issues from the past and his mind just isn't allowing him to do it again. And that creates, I guess, almost the main theme of the, the movie is that that distortion of reality um, and, and how possible it is for your mind to make these links to, to things that might have actually happened, creating a story that you think should be happening. But when you're snapping out of that, you know, how does that, what sort of position does that leave you in? And, and what's, and this, that's what the movie is. The movie is a guy who is working on a completely different wavelength to every single other person in the story. Um, so they're the two sort of main parts of this film that they, that they look into. But one thing that they do tap into, albeit briefly, but albeit strongly, is, is the anxiety of, of fatherhood in general, but also parenthood. Um, you know, the, the fact that so much of what he's doing is to protect his family and, even the fact when his daughter walks away, everything they're doing, they're doing for their daughter in that first little bit. They're, they're sort of trying to make her happy. She leaves her thing. She needs to go to all this kind of stuff. Um, he's trying to protect her in so many ways. And this whole distortion of reality he's created is about being the hero of his family and, and saving that. And that, that anxiety of being a parent is, is pretty real and, and doing whatever you can do to make them happy and safe. Good. Yeah. Well- You've touched on that all really nicely and, and it all ties into what the mind's capable of, like that, mm-hmm. that perception of reality and that's whether that's through mental health, through trauma, through abuse of substance, like the alcoholism that, that we see throughout the character as well. And I think the one thing I'll add in is that, that idea to the the villain in the, either the villain, there were going to be two villains in this film, either the hospital system or Ray and the idea, and I think this was done really well, of the hospital bureaucracies and the broken American healthcare system, like all the people working there through his point of view are, are cold, they're cruel, um, they're, they're, they're horrible people. And obviously, you know, you've got the, the waiting room with so many people needing to be seen and, and what's this reflecting of, of what the, the healthcare system looks like to a lot of people? Um, you know, mm-hmm. your, your insurance isn't going to cover, you're going to have to pay up front. Um, you know, are you going to be an organ donor? Um, does that give you preference in the, in the waiting list? Like if you say, yeah, I'll be an organ donor, does that get you the front of the line to see a doctor? Mm. Because, you know, if there is something wrong, cool, we can help someone else. Like what are these complications? Mm. So, um, yeah, very interesting. Yeah, good take. Well, what did, what else did you take from this film? <laughs> yeah, good. Um, I think when you're making a movie and you're playing with the idea of memory distortion and, and, and trauma, causing this ultimate reality you do have a really long string to play with and i think the film did take liberties at times with his imaginations to make things that were very convenient to push the story in the direction that they wanted i think they were also careful to ground it in reality because as i said there's only there's only ever two solutions we're watching a movie with a man who has lost his mind and we want to discover what the real story is or there is 
the story about a, me- a messed up hospital that steals out of towners and, and, and kills their organs. And I, I think because we are playing with this, this, either way, either way you're talking about distortion of reality, which you can kind of do whatever you want with it because it's not real, or you're dealing with this messed up hospital, which is doesn't really exist in reality. So you can kind of do whatever you want with that as well. And I think there's these liberties that you can take with these kinds of films um, that they take, but they, they do a good job of trying to not go too far. But it's, it's, it's almost easier to do. Like you can have so much more fun with these stories because you can go anywhere. Yeah, I, I sort of lead in a little bit with what you're saying anyway and sort of goes in with one of the scenes that you spoke about as well, Leia. Like I think it did a, a really good job of, of making you question the whole time like whether it was the healthcare system or whether it was Ray as the villain. And the, like, and you've said this as well, the, the little things that make you keep guessing, like, and I'll, you know, you, you mentioned the balloon and the, the CCTV skipping and the, the, yeah. the scarf being in the hospital room. And I mean, all those things to me, like, I just think that's a really good job and it's a good way of putting a, a film together. Like it, it didn't lead one way or another too much. And I, I just, I appreciated that. Every time you thought you was going in one direction, it pulled you back into the pulled other yeah exactly like the dog for example like this is we're at the scene now where this guy is like he's actually realizing that he's lost his mind he's lost his mind this didn't happen oh my god maybe i pushed her down the hill there's a blood what's going on and then you see the dog and it's like hang on it was real no it was real he's right it's really good yeah um did you go on imdb at all yep i had a good one this one was uh dr bertram played by Stephen pobolowski uh he's in glee and he's just one of those faces where I'm like, I'm a hundred percent going to see what I'm, I don't I can't think what I know you in, but I know exactly when I look at, it, I'm going to know. It. And he's in the first season of play. I had exactly the same um, IMDb as well. And he had 279 acting credits. So there was surely yeah. something there. I, I jumped on because I thought he was the voice of Rex in toy story, the dinosaurs. Oh yeah. Um, but obviously I found out, I was like, yep, it's Glee as well. That I remember. Yeah. Him. So same one. Very good. Very familiar. <laughs> That's a good one. All right questions i've got a few so what it, fill us in on yours first all right i've just got one for one for you um what do you think happens to ray and i'm not obviously he's probably gonna get caught but do, do you think he ever remembers the incident oh good i've got a similar sort of question so like the question is is he going to wake up and say the truth or will he just never want to face those realities and, and try and escape from the cops so you'd think that the police aren't too far behind so mm. i can't say like he's not I can't and what's he got? He's got like three bodies in his car now. Um, yeah, but regardless of that, he also like is a blow up hospital and shot a few people. So they're on him for that. True. Uh, kill, yeah, kill a few people too. So I, 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 I don't know. I don't know what you want to say because like we said before, like I was going for this guy the whole time. So I don't know whether I want to see him to be able to just go deal with his, his truths or whether he deserves a consequence for his actions because in his mind, what we were seeing, they were horrible people. So in his mind, he's done the right thing. But at the same time, really, he hasn't done the right thing. So it's a tough one. <laughs> I I don't want him to ever snap out of it. I want him to I want him to create his wife and his daughter to be understanding of the fact that he has to go to jail and they're cool with it and he goes to jail because he did the wrong thing at the hospital, even though he thinks it's the right thing. But there is that moment where he's driving away and his face kind of drops. Yeah. Um, almost like now I'm out of it all. I've got a chance to sit and think. Oh crap. <laughs> and I don't I, it's still a bit ambiguous, but um I don't want him to, to ever know. I was getting a bit worried. I thought you were going like psycho ending there where he's, he, he thinks that, um, that body he's got like his, his wife and his daughter and he's going to take oh, yeah. him in his house. And, yeah. Truth. There's, yeah. there's a real possibility that actually, well, he's got the body of his wife and his daughter yeah. too. If he, uh, yeah. Comes to that. If he yeah, comes to him. <laughs> like, good one. Good one. I like that one. Um, this one, I think, I think this is harsh. I saw this in a review. So this is what oh, a, no. one, of, one of the reviews said was fractured is if, Hitchcock fell down and hit his head and concussed himself and shot a movie anyway. <laughs> it ties in well with this <laughs> psycho, but I thought that was really harsh. I think that that's, I didn't think that movie, the movie was that bad. <laughs> no, and look, but again, with psycho, they're not giving you these two, these two opportunities to, to know which, which way it's going to go. Like it's, it's a psycho has a really good reveal at the end that, mm. Obviously, there's a lot of discourse about the film that you probably know it nowadays. If you watch when you watch that for the first time, it's a wonderful reveal. Um, this, this movie is not really trying to do that. I don't think anyone who's if this movie did that for you, then that's a wonderful experience. If, if you genuinely thought this is a guy trying to protect his family, oh my god, the whole thing wasn't real. That's really satisfying. 
But I think this movie is very aware that the amount of movies that you make these days, you're looking out for these kind of tropes. And it was aware of that. And it made sure that it played up on that. But it still kept you guessing which, which avenue it was going to go down. So I think that's a pretty unfair, to be perfectly yeah, honest. I think so too. Um, all right. So at the start, we, there's a bit of commentary in the car between Joe and Ray about how slow he's driving. Is this because he got drunk at the Thanksgiving dinner? And he's just being extra yeah. cautious. Yeah. Cautious. Oh goodness. I know. I think, but I feel like the comment's a general comment that he always is. But I think it's probably based on the fact that he killed his wife in a car accident. Car accident and yeah. back on that, it's a pretty awful thing to say to your husband. Yeah. Well, I because yeah, like I I did not in his mind he's been sober, but I don't think he, he's been sober. So um, yeah, maybe it's a, a joint thing of all like because they got overtaken <laughs> quite a few times. Um, but they, he also, they also did say he goes the speed limit. So I just get the feeling that everyone else was speeding. But it's, yeah. it's a nice take. It's an interesting take. Um, sooner or later, everyone falls. This was uh, what the doctor said to, to Ray. Is that, is that true? And that's just that we're saying, yes, Ray is falling here. And he's fallen. That's it. He's done. Um, I feel like that line should feel stronger than it is. Mm. It's not really like it's it's very much like a important line that doesn't feel as important, especially even mm. when you're repeating it now. I'm like, I don't know if I don't know if it works as well as it could. I like the idea of it more than I actually like it. Yeah, fair. I, I just obviously that scene is all in his mind, so he's telling himself yeah, I'm falling. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's there. Yeah. Uh, last one, and this is one of those things that just doesn't make sense. So. Obviously, it's a vision where the doctor gives his daughter the teddy bear. And then when he's in the, the corridor below, he finds that teddy bear in the bin. Mm. Why, why is he, like, where did, did that teddy bear in his, in his visions come from at the start? Like, because surely the doctor didn't give him a teddy bear when he was checking in. So that, that one just sort of threw me a bit. It was too convenient. Mm. It's a good point. It would have been good if, yeah, I don't know. I get the only argument you could be is that he just saw a doctor give it to someone while he was getting treated. Um, True. But, yeah, it's not as not as good. You're right. Yeah, good. Because what right. a great reveal that was when we went downstairs and we yeah. saw. It. I'm like, they're down here. Yeah. This is so real. <laughs> exactly. I had you on board. But if you think about it later, you're like, oh, it's not really good. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, that's a good pickup. All right, let's finish this off. We come up with a rating out of five. So, what are you going to finish with? Yeah, look, I think despite what was a pretty slow setup, it was a really engaging watch, and it continuously made me guess which of the two angles it was going to build to. Um, and, and the energy in that final act is a really fun ride um, where all the subtleties of the film kind of just go out the window with this really big shoot 'em up scene. Um, but what I like about it is it's clean, it's easy, and it all basically adds up. And as I said, there's only a limit for me for how good a movie with all these liberties can actually get to. But I'm still giving it three and a half stars. I toyed with the idea of it being a three-star film. Um, but I'm happy enough with giving it three and a half. Good. Um, yeah, I, I'm very similar to what it was. Like, it's an engaging thriller that had it, had me thinking the whole way through. So it's it's nothing groundbreaking. Like it follows the same tropes that you see in a lot of these types of films, and that's 100 percent fine for what it was. I think the the performance from Sam Worthington was what kept this film going. Without having mm-hmm. him as good as he was, it, it's probably a, a, a lower end sort of film. Um, and I think. You know, I'd happily recommend this to people who are like, oh, anything on Netflix is worth watching. It's like, yeah, this is a pretty easy watch that you're probably mm-hmm. going to enjoy. Um, don't have to think too hard and just get on board with what's going on. So um, I'm giving it a three out of five. Yeah, good. Which gives a 3.25, which is a fairly decent score. Mm. Not dissimilar to what we've seen online. Yeah. Well, we're on socials, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, question to go with this film is, can you make your own truth? Um, because obviously this character Ray definitely makes his own truth in this one. Um, On a completely different tack, you can you can use the power of positive thinking to make your own truth and then work mm-hmm. towards it. In a nice, Correct. very Ooh. different to what this film's trying to tell you. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> oh god! All right, we are. We'll be back again next week with a French drama from 2019. So international oh, film, hi. switching it up again. It's called Street Flow. Directed by Layla Sai and Kerry James. It stars Jamal Diagana, Bakari Diambera, and Kerry James as well. So, directing and starring. Kerry James. Mm-hmm. 
exciting. Um, yeah. So as always, uh, this has been good. I this was a nice nice one to have a, a similar thoughts on because we didn't really agree yeah. last week. <laughs> I it's fun when we don't agree though. Um, we get a chance to dissect it properly. There's probably someone who like hated fractured and they're like, I got to hear what someone else is saying, and they listen to us both. And they're like, these two aren't these two aren't going hard enough on it. <laughs> More, more likely than not. Uh, yeah, true. <laughs> but no, I think, yeah, get out and, and check this one out if you haven't. But uh, as always, thank you. And uh, I'll see you next week. I'll see you then.